Hi, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Welcome to this week's Sunday service. I want to first thank everyone who's sent in checks through the mail uh, to the churches. Uh, I, I thank you for uh, mailing them in. I want to be honest, I had to mail in three weeks uh, worth of my offerings because I figured by now we would have been back. But now I realize this is going to take a little longer. So I mailed in mine. Thank you to the rest who mailed yours in. And we do have a praise to start off with. Uh, we were praying for Ryan and his test results came back negative for COVID-19. So we praise God for the, those negative results from his test. And I wanted to start with these words from Psalms. This is Psalm 27 verses 13 and 14. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Amen. Let us pray together. Ever present, perfect Father, we gather in spirit this day to praise and worship your name. As we are apart during this pandemic, we ask for your peace. Jesus appeared to the disciples and he said, peace be with you. Now more than ever, we need to be reminded of the peace you offer to us. In a time of uncertainty, we have taken time to remember that you are our God. In this time of uncertainty, remind us of how you have already blessed us over and over. Father, we ask that through the power of your Holy Spirit, we will be united as we worship apart from one another. We lift up this prayer to you in the name of Jesus. Amen.
shall return in power to Our reading today comes from the first letter of Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. A living hope. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our gospel reading today comes from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Jesus appears to the disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, May the words of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our fortress. Amen. On Easter Sunday last week, my good friend and my classmate, Reverend Timothy Stewart, and my daughter, Reverend Tori Flath, both made a point about how the stone was rolled away on that first Easter morning. Both Pastor Tory and Pastor Tim made a point to mention that the stone was not rolled away to let Jesus out, but the stone was rolled away so others could see the power of God. 
our God, the God who constantly resurrects situations far worse than what we are experiencing now, is always rolling away stones in our lives so we can have access to see the glory and the power of God. Now, I understand some people right now might be saying, Pastor Tom, you don't understand. Uh, your children are all grown up. You and your wife have the house to yourself. Uh, and, and I'm here with an energetic toddler. I'm here with an infant. Uh, you might be saying, I'm home with a teenager. Sorry, Paige. Some who are watching at home now may be in a higher risk group and they have more to worry about. And these additional burdens, they cause stress. So I'm not going to try to say I know how each and every one of you feel right now. But I will say this. We are facing this stressful situation together. And if we look to Jesus, or if we just peer into the empty tomb, we will find hope for the future. We will find peace here and now. How can I say this? Believe me, I am the furthest thing from an optimist. But I am a person who has faith in Jesus Christ. We can all have peace that comes from faith. Remember, the stone was rolled away because God wanted us to see how Jesus overcame death itself. Jesus rose to eternal life, and we have the same promise of eternal life made to us. When we read from John, I was reminded of why the stone did not need to be rolled away. John recorded that all the remaining disciples, except for Thomas, were locked up tight. They were locked up in the house. The doors were locked. And then Jesus came and stood among them. And he said to them, peace be with you. Jesus entered in a locked room. And that is proof to me that the stone didn't need to be rolled away because Jesus could go through these solid objects. This is proof to me that the stone was rolled away because God wanted the women and the disciples and all of us to know our God can take a dire, lifeless situation and transform it and resurrect it. I like how John recorded that first Easter evening, the doors were locked. But then when Thomas came back a week later, notice what John wrote. John wrote, the doors were all shut. The doors were closed, but they were no longer locked. He only mentioned that the first week. And I believe John is teaching us that something is happening and that something new is the power of the Holy Spirit. The disciples are experiencing something new and it's the Holy Spirit in their lives. The disciples are gaining faith in Jesus because of the Holy Spirit. I experienced the same type of power this week. Uh, in the beginning of the week, I watched on the news, I watched on TV, and I saw the wind damage to Congress Hall in Cape May. I saw the damage to the Wildwood Boardwalk, and I saw the damage to the marina in Summers Point. All of these places are extremely familiar to me. And as I reflected and saw all these things that were happening from this windstorm, something deep inside of me spoke to me. And I heard these words well up from deep within my soul. And the words were, Thomas, do I have your attention? Do I have your attention yet? 
Could all these things be that are going on, could they be a way for God to get our attention? I, I'm not sure sometimes how Denise puts up with me. Uh, sometimes I have so much on my mind that I'm thinking about so many other things. She'll tell me a whole sentence and I'll nod and I'll say, okay. And then I'll look at her with a blank look and say, what did you just say? And with a deep breath, she patiently repeats everything she just said to me. And that's because she didn't have my full attention. I heard her speaking, but the words did not sink in. Could we be doing the same thing with God, hearing his word week after week, reading his word, but not taking time to really listen? Are we too distracted? Is God doing all these things so that he can get our attention? I'm not sure how Denise puts up with me, and I'm not sure how God puts up with me. But one thing is for sure, uh, this pandemic and all the wind damage and things I saw, I heard bell playing, parts of bell playing were without power for over 24 hours. And the question is, is God saying to us, do I have your attention yet? Are you frustrated by this current situation? Well, maybe it's time for all of us to listen to God. It's time for us to listen to God and not listen to the news media. It is time for us to listen, to look at the empty tomb, to peer into where the stone has been rolled away. We need to look into the empty tomb and realize we need to look at our situations and realize that God is still in control. I kind of missed last week. I missed that point of the stone being rolled away. And the stone for me was rolled away because God wanted the attention of the women. And God wanted the attention of the disciples. The pain and the suffering that Jesus endured well, that's what everybody was remembering. That's what they were focused on. And now that they even see the empty tomb, they still don't fully understand. They think that someone has taken his body. But Jesus comes to them. And he speaks to them. And his first words, peace be with you. Maybe it's a time to unlock the doors of our hearts, like the disciples unlock the doors to their home. This is a time for us to pray to God. This is a time for us to teach our infants and our toddlers. It's a time for us to teach our teenagers. It's a time for us to teach ourselves how to pray. God has my full attention. Does he have yours? The time has come for us to rise up as Christians and pray for our leaders. The time has come for us to pray for our nation, for the whole world. The time has come to put away our pleasures and to look at the empty tomb. As I mentioned earlier, those places that were damaged, those were all places I remember where I went to just go and to enjoy the world. There were places that I saw as I was fishing. There were places that I saw as I was on vacation. There were places I walked on. But it's time to put those pleasures away and it's time to pray. And it's time to let the love of God show in our life by our words and our actions. Jesus said to Thomas, after Thomas believed that Jesus was risen. And he said to him, Blessed are you because you have seen me and you believe. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. We are blessed because we believe. We are blessed. Yes, we are apart from one another but we are blessed no matter what. We have an assurance of salvation. And we read about that in 1 Peter today. 1 Peter 
uh, Peter reminded us, you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for his salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, in this you rejoice. Even now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than that of gold, though perishable, is tested by fire, and it may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. Think back to your last week. How many times did you have indescribable and glorious joy? We should have that for we are receiving the outcome of our faith the salvation of our souls. The stone is rolled away and God has my attention. Now it is time for us to act. Now it is a time for us to pray for the world. Remember, John wrote that Jesus did so many more miracles, but they're not recorded in this book, John said. But these miracles that were recorded, were recorded so that you could believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Now this struck me, and, I, and I, I remember these same types of words, so I looked it up, and at the very end of John, the last two uh, verses, John wrote, this is the disciple who is testifying to these things and has written them. And we know that his testimony is true, but there are also many other things that Jesus did. Even if every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself, the whole entire world, could not contain the books that would be written. So here's what I believe. Here's what God re revealed to me. I believe that the list of miracles that John talks about, that the world itself cannot contain, that list is still growing. And it will continue to grow. Remember, the stone is rolled away so we can see the miracles. And now, in a time when life is inside out, we need to roll away anything that prevents us from seeing the miracles Jesus is performing right now. The stone is rolled away. Let's not push the stone back in place. Let's not push it back because of unbelief. But it's time to realize that God is still in control. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have given to us. And Father, we ask your blessing on this world. We ask for your mighty hand to come and end this pandemic. We ask for you to protect those who are working, all of those who are working, doctors, nurses, bank tellers, um, people at the grocery stores, uh, the, the mail people who are delivering the mail. Father, those who are working for the state, those who are working in the prisons. Father, we want to take this moment to lift up our cares. We want to take this moment to lift up those that are in our hearts right now. Father, we thank you. And we praise you. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the gift of salvation we received through the sacrifice that Jesus made. And Father, we lift this prayer up to you in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Let us confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
And now, receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. Amen.